Hey guys, and welcome to Should You Buy It, where all we do is talk a little bit about the game and tell you whether or not we think it's worth the cost. Begin meditation. In this episode, we'll be playing Retreat to Enin, a survival game where instead of always worrying about the elements of survival, you should be able to focus more on meditation and being one with the planet. Now, the first question that we always cover in these videos is what stage of development is the game in? And in this case, Retreat to Enin is currently in full release and available on PC for $25. So what exactly is the game? Well, Retreat to Enin is a survival game that really tries to put a lot of importance on the world and our impact on it. It tries to accomplish this goal by only allowing you to interact with the world in specific ways. An example of this is the fact that you can't cut down any trees in the game and instead are only allowed to use fallen branches and dead plant matter to help you survive. Now there is an overarching storyline as to why you care so much about the planet in this game. There's honestly not much to spoil though since you hear the entirety of the storyline within the first 30 seconds of you booting up the game, but what it basically boils down to is that humans have ruined the world through pollution or some other environmental damage. This then led to the end of civilization, but humanity has now bounced back and each person must go on a retreat to Enin and become one with the world through survival and meditation before they can properly rejoin society. Now when we say meditation, don't take that lightly. This game has an absolute ton of meditation that it wants you to do. If you're not comfortable with that for some reason, you can just click the button and walk away or simply ignore it, but I will say it does somewhat help to relax you. There are two major kinds of meditation in the game, and those are guided and unguided meditation. Unguided meditation is simply sitting down in a little dome, then waiting and breathing while you take in the environment until your spirit gauge is full. Guided meditation, however, is the same thing, but can only be done once per day at specific locations in each of the biomes. To level up and progress through the game, though, you will have to find three guided meditation locations within each and every biome. In total, there are three biomes, which leaves us with a grand total of nine golden domes that you will need to find and do guided meditation at. It's worth noting that you don't have to follow all of these guided meditations, but it is something worth at least giving a try for a moment if you end up playing the game. After you complete one of these golden domed guided meditations, you will then be granted one level which comes with an increased carry weight and of course some new crafting recipes. New crafting recipes that you will unlock are going to be pretty standard for a survival game. These include things like cooking pots for better meals, hammocks to keep you from getting poisoned by bugs when you sleep, and crop plots for plants. All of these feed into the idea of base building, which is the ability to create a cool looking base that will help to feed you, keep you warm, and always keep you hydrated. Now there is some extremely basic combat in the game that basically just boils down to you spamming left click in order to shoot arrows or spamming left click in order to attack with your spear. There are really only three threatening or dangerous animals for the players to deal with. These are the wolf, bear, and snake. The wolf and bear will simply run at you until you or they end up dying. They're pretty easy to deal with too, since all you need to do is run backwards and just spam shoot some arrows at them while you sprint away, making the fight incredibly easy. The other type of enemy in the game is a snake, which acts more like a trap than it does a predator. All these little snakes do is try to hide in some grass and then wait for you to walk over them and bam, you're poisoned and hopefully have some antidote that you're able to make quickly or you're going to die within five to 10 minutes. So now let's jump over to the pros and cons section for the video. First up for the pros was that the meditation and teleport stations helped to immerse us into the game world. With the whole idea of the game being set over a thousand years into the future, it helped to portray the futuristic setting of the game. And lastly for the pros was that the background music was pretty relaxing, even though it didn't really feel like it fit the somewhat intense survival atmosphere that the game was putting you in. Now for the cons, and to be fair with you, there's quite a few, so just hang with me here. First up is that the combat is absolutely awful. There's really no way to put this other than combat basically boils down to you either running away and spamming left click or standing still and spamming left click. You can also look at the animations for combat, which are also just terrible in their own right, as when you swing a spear instead of stabbing something, you kind of just wobble it around your screen, and when you shoot a bow, the animation just feels wrong and jank in some way. Following that is the game is riddled with lots of cosmetic and game-breaking bugs. To give you some examples, fires will 
not hurt you whenever you stand on top of them, and I'm not sure if that one's a bug to be honest or just a gameplay choice, but either way, it does not feel right. You can also have issues like me where you'll get stuck between two trees and then be forced to load a previous save in order to get out of them because your character is stuck within them, otherwise you're just going to starve to death and have to load a previous save anyways. And then there's also visual bugs you'll come across, like being able to just see through mountains for some reason because they weren't placed properly or something didn't load a texture right. Either way, there is a lot of cosmetic and game breaking bugs, so just understand that going into it. Following that is that there is no autosave or checkpoint system within the game. To me, this is just unheard of and any modern title and I really don't understand why it's not in there. All they really need to do is make it so whenever you sleep it auto saves right as you hit the button so that you don't have to risk going all the way back to the start like I did because you didn't realize there wasn't an auto save. You also can come into situations where you manually save while you're poisoned or something and then end up dying and every time you load that save you're just going to be in an endless death loop so once again if you do play this game make sure to make lots of saves all the time, otherwise you're going to get into situations where you're going to be going back a significant amount of progress. After that is that poison and disease can result in you dying very quickly. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but in my experience when a game is trying to be a chill, cool, meditative experience, putting something in the game that makes you panic is not helpful. So personally, I don't know what they need to do with this mechanic, maybe it just needs to be ripped out, but when I'm trying to play this relaxing style of game, putting something in that makes me panic is not going to help. Following that is that the meditation really just felt generic and like it was nothing impressive. To be fair, the meditation itself, at least the guided ones, weren't necessarily bad. Let's start by taking a deep breath in and slowly letting that breath out. They just weren't necessarily good either, and for a game that's trying to focus around relaxation and meditation, this is pretty unacceptable to me. Next is that for a game that's supposed to be about immersion, the graphics really actually brought me out of the game rather than into it. And to clarify, I am not saying the graphics were particularly bad, just more so that they didn't feel like they fit the world. To give you an example of this, if you've ever played The Forest, the graphics are gritty, they're dark, and it fits the whole horror aspect. In this game, it just doesn't feel like they fit, and I think a lot of that is probably because they're pre-purchased assets from a store rather than all of them being homemade for the game. Following that one is that the animations just felt kind of unimpressive. What I mean by that is not necessarily the graphical aspect of them, but more so how they play their role within the game. To give you an example, whenever you hang up meat to dry, it'll kind of just float onto the hook rather than your character placing it there. Next up is that the game feels like an easter egg hunt the entire time you're progressing through the main storyline, if you could even call it a storyline. What I mean by this is that you have to just run around and find these gold golden domes with no rhyme or reason as to where they're supposed to be. All you know is, hey, it's in this biome somewhere. Good luck and go find it. Yes, there are some ruins laying around, but at the end of the day, they are a pain to find, and it's not fun to feel like you're playing an Easter egg hunt where you can only find one egg every 30 to 45 minutes for no apparent reason. Following that is the storage system in general was just rather worthless. In order to make the biggest chest in the entire game, which only holds 50 pounds, you have to put a lot of resources into it. And 50 pounds to give you some context here is like 40 rocks or 50 sticks, and your own inventory goes all the way up to 300 plus pounds by the time you're able to craft these things. So personally, I just don't like the whole storage system in general. I did think the baskets were kind of interesting, but they weren't interesting interesting enough because they were so buggy all the time. After that is that the snow biome feels like an empty abyss the majority of the time you're in it. I don't really know what else to say here other than when you play the game you'll understand what I mean. You can kind of look at the screen and you can see that the snow biome just feels completely empty and without really any textures or design to it. It feels like it was quickly thrown in, they threw some trees, they threw some mountains in there, and threw some animals in there and said, yep, it's done, it looks good. Whereas the other two biomes actually look like they put a lot of work into, even if they're not the most immersive thing at the end of the day. Second to last is that there's just not enough content in the game. This is very straightforward for me. When you spend $25 on a game, you should expect to get 25 hours of enjoyment out of it. And in this case, you just 
don't have enough content to warrant that unless you really, really like really basic base building so you can have a very mediocre graphical meditation moment where you kind of just breathe and you're not guided in it whatsoever. To be honest, there's only nine things you have to do and it took me six to eight hours to complete the entirety of the main storyline, so I just wish there was more to offer for the price that they're asking. And finally for the cons is that the game just feels rather stressful with all the different bugs, the janky combat, and the gameplay all feeding into this experience. Yet it's trying to tell you, hey, we're a relaxing, calm, chill, we want to help you enjoy your day kind of a game, but instead it's saying, oh no, you got poisoned, you better hurry or you'll go back two hours to your last save point. Oh no, the combat's so jank, your arrows are going through your enemies, don't panic. Oh no, you got a bug, go back to your last save point. And that's just not a relaxing experience for me. So I feel like the game is almost just confused as to what it wants to be. So now it's time for the rating for the game, and when we rate games, we want to get one hour of enjoyment out of every one dollar that the game costs. So for this game in particular, in Retreat to Enin, we would want to get roughly 25 hours of enjoyment out of the $25 cost of the game. And after putting several played hours into this game, we give it 2 out of 10 rotten potatoes. Retreat to Enin was, to be completely honest with you, a rather rough ride. While the first 30 minutes of gameplay was somewhat interesting, the whole concept of meditating in an extremely stressful environment didn't really resonate with me as a survival game player. It almost felt like this game wanted to be a nature walk, but accidentally made itself a fairly intense survival game experience, especially at the beginning of the game. For a game to come out in full release, even if it only has good intentions, and then charge its players $25 for a dramatically subpar survival game experience and a somewhat average meditation simulator just feels wrong to me. Sure, the game may have a small audience out there of people who just love survival games and meditation so much that they don't care about the fact that they are both pretty much subpar, but for most people, I think it's fair to say that Retreat to Enin is definitely not worth the cost. Now before you guys go, thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more survival game content and reviews. We just want to quickly shout out our Platinum and Above members Jonathan S, Caustic FPV, and Jim Phillips, and if you too would like to help support the channel for less than a dollar, which is less than the price of a cheeseburger these days, you can hit the join button down below to check out our membership program. Otherwise, thank you so much again for watching, and we'll see you next time.